All right, so this is my first look at Brightspace. Our schools adopted this to roll it out everywhere within a year, and I'm on a pilot, and I'm running my first class in about four days. And I want to examine this just from having never really looked at it before. If I did, I've forgotten everything. So I've got my sun drop, I've got my water, and I've got my uh, Google document in which to take notes. And here we have Brightspace. And here I have an empty shell um, of the course, which should have nothing in it. So my first reactions are we've got a relatively clean interface. We are calling it Brightspace. The company has desired to learn D2L. We've got our school branding here at the top. Not sure what this is, so I hover over it. It says select the course. I click it, and it seems to have a drop down of my three courses. So that's a nice shortcut. Uh, if that stays there while we're in other courses, that's great because then, um, then even if I'm in a course, I can jump to another course. I use that feature in Blackboard all the time. Here we have message alerts. I'm assuming that's some kind of inside message system. Here is subscription alerts, so maybe I can subscribe to discussion forums or posts. Update alerts. Um, not sure if that would be a student gets updates from items that the instructor changed or due dates, so we're going to have to learn over time what that does. And then this looks like what could be an icon and of course my name and settings. So I'm going to look at each of these as we go through message, instant messages, click that, and something pops up. Got a delay here. It's not great. It's my prompt to open my soda. And so there seems to be this messaging center. Reminds me a little bit of Moodle, so I can add people to a friends list. And there's nobody there, so let's start with a couple of people I know. Um, it says no friends found. Oh, that's kind of sad. So we'll search, and I'm going to search for um, one of the guys here who's involved. No results. I'm going to search for my wife who's involved. There she is. So pick her and add as a friend. So that was easy enough. Let's see who else. I'm going to pick um, someone else and add them as a friend. Okay, good. And class list. Not sure how that's going to be populated yet, but I assume that when that's there, it'll be a bunch of people. So this seems geared towards students being able to see everybody else. I can also send messages, but I suppose I have to check people. So I'm going to go to friends. And I'm going to send my wife a message. And it's a little weird, the message down here, no messages. Yo. Right there. And so then presumably she gets some kind of alert. And we'll see what happens if she replies. And go back. I'll send Ellen one too. And testing the messages feature. I've added you as a friend in PS. Okay. I do not have permission to send a message to the selected user. So I'm going to. It's either because she's offline or she has a setting that doesn't allow that or something. So that's a little bit intriguing. Let's go and look at settings in here. And so the filter, we can look at people who are online. That's actually great for students, especially if you have a lot of people working from home, they can see who else is on at the same time and get a chat going. And so we've got some basic sort of inbox features here. 
not a whole lot to change. I don't know why you'd want to change this wording much. Um, yeah, so we'll leave that canceled since I didn't change anything. And that was the settings class list inbox. So there's really not a whole lot else there. Let's see what this box next to their name is. This is my history with that friend. And it doesn't look like that does anything else. I thought maybe we could check them as a friend or something else. So it's about all I think I can do here. There's no close option on this. I actually have to close the browser window, which is surprising. It's a little bit kludgy interface wise. And so we'll close that. And now if I go to email, and while that's loading, I'll explain my philosophy is generally to do what I call IE, ignore and explore. So if you're looking for a particular feature, you poke around until you find it and don't get distracted or bogged down in other things. Otherwise, explore, look around. So what I'm doing now is just going step by step through each thing to get a feel of it. Now this has opened and replaced my current window with what looks like a, a full email interface with rich text and everything else. So heck, I'll just send it to myself and then off different institutional email and uh, I'll copy my work email which is basically copying to myself and subject central Piedmont sending a message from Brightspace and there's an address book here which I'm curious about and we have this normal rich text editing. I assume that these are going to be um, similar to what I have within the class interface, but I don't want to explore that just yet, but it looks like all the standard tools. And we can click here to see more. It doesn't look like as many as Blackboard, it looks a little cleaner than Blackboard, it remains to be seen um, if we're missing anything. And then it looks like, ooh, I can record audio or upload something, so just to be fun. We'll record. I don't know if I'm going to have a microphone conflict because I'm also recording this video, but we'll see. Hey, do you know that we can record messages and send them this way? Hey, do you know that we can record messages and send them this way? And I'll add it. And I have to put a note on that. Uh, a message. It's a audio message. Okay. So add that. So weird with the pop-ups and so on, but we'll see what happens. And uh, testing email within Brightspace. Wonder if there is a signature option. So while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and, well, I'll send that because I'm afraid it might delete this. Um, this is a bizarre thing, like that the send button is in the top left. You'd expect it to be right or at the bottom. So you do all your work and you have to go back to the top to hit send. So sending, send successfully, and now we're back in a new message screen. So I'm going to check the settings on this. And save a copy of outgoing, send a copy of each outgoing, so I can actually have them sent to myself. So I like that option because it means I have a record of everything I sent from within this interface. And what else? Oh, and I have a whole email signature. So what I can do is go into my uh, normal email and copy and paste that here. So for now, I'll just put Professor D. Ivon Reason. And later I can add phone number and address and all that stuff. And 
So show external email addresses. Everything else looks pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And that's not a whole lot of settings, but that's enough to get started. So that was messaging and mail, and then there's this alert. So let's have a look at that. There's no items found, so that's not something that we can click on or set. It just shows something popped up. It'll probably allow me to click on it there. I'll go ahead and click on my name. So I can look at this as a student and got some other things here. So let's start with my profile. And changing picture is good. It's unfortunate I can't drag and drop here like I could in the email. So let's see if I've got something easily accessible here. And oh, there's a locker. So locker, I'm guessing would be like a digital space here at CPCC. There's nothing in my locker, but it looks like there is a locker. So that's interesting. It may be some kind of sort of Dropbox-ish sort of storage that each student has. So I'm going to, I'm going to close all this because it's annoying me. Um, I'm going to see if I can change the picture. That's pretty standard stuff. I'll go to my computer. And here you can, looks like you could drag it there. Um, and well, anyway, we'll, we'll do that later as long as we know it can be done. And then there's what other options here? We can change screen size. Um, I'll just cancel. And then awards showcase, don't know if that's related to badging or something. It doesn't seem to go anywhere. Uh, personal info doesn't let me edit. Tagline, um, helping people demystify their world. And interests. All right, lots. So this is a little disappointing because I can't find anything to really put in my profile. I really miss what I could do with Moodle as far as putting all that information in there. And um, in other environments, I would just link to a Google Doc. And this doesn't seem to allow any of that. So I'm going to see what happens if I put some um, HTML there. I'll, I'll worry about that later. That starts to get technical. So, so let me just uh, save that. And this is where I will go to my notes and make a note that um, how do we change things in a profile? Why can't I send a message to a friend that can to another. Um, why? I guess the question. So now it, take, it took me back to the messaging center, even though I was in my profile. So it seems to remember where I was, which is good. So now I'm going to go to the settings and these settings. Well, actually, I'll go back here. I looked at my profile. We'll check on notifications to see what my options there are. And it looks like things related. You can get Pulse from the App Store. I don't want to do that, but it looks like you could. And then you could get alerts from the course on your phone for Android or iPhone. Um, it lists my email there. If I click this, I should go to the exact same settings I was on before. And not really. It just gives me that one choice. So presumably our school has locked that down if they have to use my school choice. And then I could add um, a mobile number here. I don't like to get classroom settings on my phone, but for those who do, that would make sense. And then 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and try the daily summary to start, and then in the future I may switch that to weekly. And then meanwhile, new comments from others on a post. I like, well, I don't know if I want email. I want messages. I want this little alert thing, but I don't see that as an option. So that's, that's a little bit weird. Um, so I don't... I'm puzzled by this. I really would have thought they'd have a, a little bell here. So I'm going to write that. Um, an instant Um, but it looks like you can basically um, set up messages for all kinds of stuff. I don't know why they would not allow SMS on some of these. Like, perhaps they would just generate too many. Um, but grade item release, grade item updated, basically just you got new grades. These are grayed out because I haven't registered my phone but um, helpful for students probably to know that they've gotten a grade, which is good. And this quiz due date or end date is two days away is also good, although what if they want it for three days or one week or whatever. So they seem to pick the two day kind of arbitrarily. Um, yeah, so I didn't really change anything here, but uh, I'll go ahead and register my mobile right now. Well, actually I won't because I don't even want that on the recording, but you all know how that works. And then account settings. So font, font size, medium, hmm, let's see what huge looks like. Huge is not actually that huge. Large, medium, <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. Much to do about nothing. Um, dialogue settings, we have dialogues and pop-ups. Um, are you an assistive technology? Show secondary windows as dialogues. I guess we just have to experiment with that. Um, if you want to just do straight HTML, you can, which might come in handy for someone like me, but not for most people, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the rich text editor on. And um, I don't know about marking red, unread. Um, I think I'm going to leave that as default and then just going to go down. We've got English. We've got the default is 12 hour AM PM. You could do military time if you wanted. First day of the week is Sunday. In this case, I usually do Monday for my courses. I'm not sure where that's going to show up, but I'll change that anyway. And then the default date, we have month, day, year. I don't particularly like that. I actually like year, month, day, but that's so non-standard. I should probably leave it alone. And then this is, you know, if you go with an international European audience and then percentage format, um, looks pretty standard. We're in the Americas, um, Greenwich mean time minus five. So I think, I think we're not Toronto. I think we're Eastern United States. So we're going to be more like, usually they list New York. I don't know if we're in the Toronto time zone, so I guess we'll find out soon enough. And then appear online when I'm logged in. I'm done with that. And I think that's all I need for now. I haven't really changed much there either, but we'll save it so we get that medium font for sure. And I think that was the only settings we had up here. Plus we have the logout and I'm going to go to settings here, portfolio category management and video note captions. So we'll look at video note captions first. 
and no video notes match your search and filter criteria so it doesn't look like that's something we even care about right now we'll go look at portfolio category management and no idea it's completely blank which is sort of annoying it says portfolio up in the top here uh, Oh, there it loads up category management, add a new category, category name. So I don't know what this is, but let's just say since I do web design, we'll do introduction will be part of theirs and I'll hit save. And then we'll do um, what would be something else, project site, and we'll save that. and see what that means now I can go on these you know I thought I did those uppercase we'll rename that save it I did so for I was just getting sloppy it should be treated as titles so I'm not sure yet what that does here but let's say we do a category web those are categories so I'm not sure how this fits in yet and the options here are not entirely clear we can basically rename and retire so we're gonna have to figure out later on what that does put a note in here um, what's with the portfolio stuff And I'm gonna go ahead and add a suit. So top menu exploration. And I'll go ahead and indent all these because they're part of it. So I think that's everything on the top menu. And that's sort of the first review. We'll just go back to the main main page here. much has changed so we just got a quick look at those little things and I'm gonna pause this do another one or stop this and start over and begin to look at these courses